Hi there everybody, Peter of England bringing you a video concerning current political um, news that's uh, very, very topical at the moment. Everybody seems to be talking about the House of Saud. Uh, this is connected very closely with the American Empire. Now, what's actually going on in Saudi Arabia at the moment? Why is a country that has been left mainly to its own devices for the last 20 to 30 years, suddenly now being uh, targeted on the block a little bit like Muammar Gaddafi's Libya was some years ago. What's the agenda here? Now, what we have here is also some very uh, uh, strange events, all typically linked up. The Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, um, as you will recall, earlier in the year, 2017 finishing of the year, made a series of mass arrests within the kingdom. Many of the connected individuals were rounded up, arrested and confirmed or confined to hotels while certain trials and investigations were underway. So this was done at the behest of the United States Trump administration and this is leading now to a, a significant change in the Arab Peninsula politics. So what's that got to do with Jamal Khashoggi, recently murdered it would appear now, in the uh, um, uh, Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Well, what happened just before the major news of this, uh, this murder was uh, brought into the public mainstream media? We had someone called Pastor Brunson released uh, from a potential 36-year jail sentence for spying and espionage in Turkey. Now, Many of you possibly fail to realise just exactly who Pastor Brunson was or wasn't. Pastor Brunson isn't just an ordinary uh, pastor of uh, some ordination working in Turkey. He was the, the head of CIA, CIA operations in that region. And that's why the charges of espionage and spying were brought against him. And what happened mysteriously, Donald Trump may, uh, managed to extract him within 24 hours from this potential 36-year jail term and have him sitting there comfortably in the White House. Now, why that move was arranged was for the news that was about to break concerning Jamal Khashoggi. Jamal Khashoggi, uh, butter wouldn't melt in his mouth of the Khashoggi family. Some of the most despicable individuals ever to walk the planet involved in arms dealing and every type of nefarious activity that you could imagine and in a part could not imagine being operated out of Saudi Arabia. So Jamal Khashoggi uh, isn't, uh, isn't some sort of uh, just ordinary journalist working for, let's see, the mainstream media fake news Washington Post in New York. What this guy is, is a Democrat, a demonocrat, part of the new world order, the globalist agenda, a Satanist in short as they all are. So, what's that got to do with the price of rice, right? Well, how this all came about is the control that the Saudi Arabia um, House of Saud has been under since the early 70s when the Arab oil embargo began following the attacks by Egypt and Syria in 1972 on the date of, I think, October the 6th, Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the Jewish calendar, when uh, Egypt and Syria launched a joint attack on Israel. At that point, Saudi Arabia was encouraged to bring sanctions against the use of uh, the United States for its complicit uh, uh, involvement with, with, um, with Israel. And so what it did, it used something called the oil weapon. From 1972 to about 1976, the price of a barrel of crude oil rose uh, almost 500, 600, 700 percent. And so the powers that be in the United States decided that this was never going to be allowed to happen again. So what happened is uh, Nixon introduced something called the Nixon shock, where the price of the United States dollar was disconnected from um, its being backed in gold. The United States dollar was also already linked to all oil sales globally. And what this had meant is, under the deal that was cut by Kissinger um, as the main operative to organise this new world order, uh, what was decided upon was that from then on, all the United States um, 
dollars that were being generated by Saudi oil revenue had to go over to buy United States treasuries and also the money that they were taking from their billions of oil revenue had to be deposited in, deposited in United States banks, which therefore were dollar-based. What that meant then is that it was total monetary control rested in the hands of the United States Treasury with a special department set up in the United States Treasury to facilitate the purchase of the, the bonds. And off the interest of those bonds, the agreement was, as a fait accompli to the House of Saud, that every single piece of furniture, every um, public works organised uh, building project had to be serviced by American contractors and they had to purchase American product. From the trucks that collected the waste, from the houses that were being built by, with American contractors, through the, the port structures, the electricity generating platforms, the oil exploration, and a reminder was given to the House of Saud that if they refused the deal, then the same thing would happen to the House of Saud that happened to the Iranian Mossadegh in the, in the, uh, at the time of the, 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 the Shah of Iran, that if they didn't play ball, they would oust him and they would introduce or put in place another puppet family. So they were given an offer that they could not refuse, and in fact the Saudis went along with the deal. And from that moment, that's over from this period in particular, from the next 30 years from 72, what we had is not only the raising of the Saudi um, uh, funds being deposited in the United States, but we then had the funding of these major international terrorist organizations out of the Middle East, which were all being paid for by the Saudi Arabian money, but not controlled by the Saudi Arabians, being controlled by the Bushes, the Clintons, the Obama administrations. And just to prove that is not just some conjecture, if you have a look at Confessions of an Economic Hitman, you will need to look at page 97, which says, the evidence was indisputable. Saudi Arabia, America's long-time ally and the world's largest oil producer, had somehow become a senior treasury, as a senior treasury department official put it, the epicenter of terrorist financing. Why? Because it coincided with the revenue now that was being used by the Democratic Party and all the corporatocracy in the United States to further this one world order agenda. So, uh, what's also happened is the United States Treasury now has just seized between three and five trillion of assets belonging to the House of Saud with a view of collapsing that regime and the globalist agenda furthered on the basis or the beauty or hope that Trump loses on the midterm. So if you've liked it, thank you, press the button. Uh, we'll be doing webinars to cover this material because as you see, it can't be done just in a six or seven minute video. Peter of England, signing off. Thank you.